I enjoy being with the elephants. Sometimes it doesn't feel like I'm walking. I feel like I'm just relaxing with the elephants. Just because they're very calm, they're very polite, they're very intelligent. It is much, much better to work with the elephants than with human beings. Uh, spending a day with the elephant is good than spending a day in town. Emotionally, they're identical to us. In many ways, they're better than us. If humans can live like elephants, then you will never hear these wars <laughs> and enmities between people or nations. This world will be a very nice place to live in. In a few years, this magnificent animal we call the elephant will be no more. But there are a few men and women in East Africa working tirelessly to ensure that this day is delayed or that it never arrives. Approximately 100 elephants are killed annually in Africa as a result of poaching. You know, unfortunately, elephants have teeth, the ivory tusks, and the ivory has um, always been a very valuable commodity. It's called white gold. Tusks belong to the largest land mammal. There's a lot of mythology attached to that. And uh, there's always been a great demand for ivory in places like Japan, China. So this is the problem that we have. And it's the demand in China that uh, is driving the poaching. Daphne Sheldrick. My title now is Dr. Dame Daphne Sheldrick because I was knighted by the Queen. Well, I'm born in Kenya. My father came here in 1907 when he was a child of seven. And we had a farm at Gilgil. And so I, I was born into animals. I met my second husband, who was the founder warden of Savo National Park. David was in the Second World War. And then after the Second World War, when Kenya was creating the national parks, he was headhunted for the job of warden of Savo National Park. And he died six months later. Daphne Sheldrick founded the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust in memory of her late husband and it was the first of its kind anywhere in the world to rear orphaned elephants. This is just the end of the night. Uh, we want to start the day and uh, we just have to get the last feed of the night. So the elephants are ready, are waiting for their milk. We feed them every three hours, day and night. So they know the next feed is uh, about just before six or exactly at six. And uh, we are almost at six, so they're waiting for the milk. Each elephant has got one keeper. The keeper spends in the night with the elephant for the purpose of feeding them every three hours, covering them with blankets when they lie down to sleep to keep them warm, and they're also keeping them company.
My names are Edwin Lusichi. I'm uh, 35 years of age. I really wanted to become a priest while at school. That was my career. But I used to stay um, close to this center. And one day I was here, and they had received a call of going to rescue an elephant. So the man in charge asked me if I'm ready to come and stand in for a short while while the rest are going for a rescue so that when the rest come back, I'll be relieved. So I accepted and I started to work. That was in the year 1999. In the first place, it was a job for me. Because when I came here, I was in need of a job. But later on it changed, it's a passion. I love it, I like it. It's no longer a job, because for me, I enjoy being with the elephants. Sometimes it doesn't feel like I'm working. I feel like I'm just relaxing with the elephants. Just because they're very calm, they're very polite, they're very intelligent. It is much, much better to work with the elephants than with human beings. Edwin and his team of elephant keepers' daily schedule is to wake up at 6, take the elephants out to the park and spend the whole day with them, feeding them on milk every three hours, before bringing them back to their stables in the evening. Come on, Kajoro, come. As a keeper, you have to love the animals. Uh, if you don't, the animals will not love you and you can't work with them. Elephants are very clever, they're very intelligent. They can tell who loves them, who does not. And if you don't love them, they're very selective. They can decide not to associate with you. <laughs> When they suck on our fingers, they feel comfortable, they feel like they're relaxed, they feel they're okay. It's like the little human baby with the mother. Sometimes with the human baby sucking their own fingers, the way they feel, that is what she's doing and how she's feeling. With all the orphans being milk dependent, Edwin and his team of elephant keepers have prepared a formula using a powder with warm water to mimic the natural milk from the mother they would have had in the wild. Come on, Shakbi. All elephants are very, very maternal. Even here in the nursery, little babies that are only two years old, that are like a child of two, a human child of two, are caring and motherly towards the smaller ones. They all want to, to be close to the little one, to protect it, to love it, and to comfort it, and so on. They can teach us humans such a lot about caring and about compassion. You know, they have all the best traits of humans and not many of the bad. So. 
Each of these elephants have got their own character or personality, just like human beings, and Edwin has given them names depending on where they were rescued or the reason that caused them to be orphans. Come on, Saitis. Here is a Cytis, an elephant called Cytis, who is uh, almost two and a half years old. Uh, he's an elephant that uh, reminds us of the ban on the tread on ivory because this baby was found on this same day when Cytis, the treaty, successfully managed to ban uh, the tread on ivory for three years. And uh, we had to give this name, uh, we had to name this elephant after this treaty because it was a big success for the sake of all the elephants. She's very, very cheeky. She's sometimes mischievous. She wants to investigate around. She wants to find who you are. Sometimes she wants to cause problems. Hmm? My happiest moment is when we rescued an elephant that was almost dying, an elephant that uh, everybody had given up. This elephant is called Suguta. She was only bones left, just a skeleton. And uh, when she was found, everybody said, this is dead, just leave it. But we rescued this baby and brought her in the nursery. I took all the initiative to concentrate on this elephant and after two days on a drip, this elephant started to show some signs of life. After another two days, this elephant would walk up and stand and feed. And now this elephant is in Savo on the process of being reintroduced. I always think about her in my memory, how she came in and how she was. And I feel a lot of joy in my heart. I always say, if there's something that God will say I did good was to save this elephant. Hmm? When you raise elephants, you have to replace the family that they've lost with a human family. And there must be enough people to represent a family so that um, they, they walk with the elephants just as they would in a herd of other elephants. The humans replace the family and a different keeper will be sleeping with each elephant every night so they don't get too fond of one person. That's a mistake I made with the first elephant I raised. It became too attached to me and when I had to leave it because my elder daughter was getting married and I had to organise the wedding in Nairobi, that little elephant died of a broken heart. Well, here in Nairobi is the elephant nursery. This is where the infant elephants come, the ones that are very fragile, the ones that are fully milk dependent. This is where they come, and this is where the intensive care happens. And if we can get the elephant to two years old and it's doing well, then we transfer it to one of our two rehabilitation stations in Salvo. As night falls, Edwin and his team know very well that they have made a positive impact in the future of these infant elephants, in readiness for their reintegration back to the wild at Savo National Park.
This is Savo National Park that houses the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust Voy Unit, responsible for reintegrating orphaned elephants who have graduated from the nursery based in Nairobi back to the wild. My names are Joseph Sauni Agostino. I come from Taveta in Taita Taveta County. And I'm working with the David Shedrick Wildlife Trust at the Voy Rehabilitation or Reintegration Center. Savo National Park is the largest park in the world, covering 4% of Kenya's total land area and home to herd upon herd of wild elephants. I've, I've done this work for eight years now, and I like my, my job. I like it so much. Uh, spending a day with the elephant is good than spending a day in town. They do understand keeper's language. Yeah. Es Lempote is a greeting. You just want to say jumbo and uh, also get the smell. Uh, how are you doing today, uh, this morning? And then she's fine with that. Well, these elephants are all rescued from all parts of the country and uh, they're usually found uh, by tribal people or by Kenya Wildlife Service. Uh, the mother's been shot for ivory and uh, the, the orphan is an orphan. Now, the elephant family uh, will look after a baby to the very best of their ability, but there are not very many females that are lactating that will have enough milk to be able to to nurture two babies. And no mother elephant will jeopardize the survival of her own calf to actually feed an orphan. To an elephant, the family is all important, as indeed it is to humans. And one has to always think of elephants in a human way. Uh, emotionally, they're identical to us. In many ways, they're better than us. As the day continues and temperatures in the park soar above 30 degrees, the orphaned elephant family led by their matriarch, Lesanju, make their way into the park. Already dozens of wild elephants make their way across the park in search of water and pastures. The keepers led by Joseph are toe to toe with the elephants, watching their friends feed as they interact with their wild colleagues. Uh, this is Lesanju from Samburu, and uh, she was orphaned when she was uh, only a few weeks old. Her mother was poached, and she was left alone. What else? And the mother is gone. So she was a very small baby, and Lesanju decided to uh, go straight into a Maasai herd of cattle. These were Morans who were grazing the cattle, and then they said, oh, we have a visitor. It's Lesanju, an elephant. Ah, can't believe it. And then they said, oh, but we have to do something that we can remember you for life. And then they took a knife, they cut her ears. They also went on the other ear, they cut it like branding, just like their cattle. And then they released, oh, you go because you don't belong to us. And then when one day we'll see you, maybe in seven, eight months, uh, years uh, 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 to come, then we'll remember you because we've branded you and we'll know it was you who came when you were very small. And then they just left uh, helpless Lesanju there. We rescued her, but what next? Uh, they, she had very bad wounds on the ears. We had to treat her with lots of medicine until when she was completely healed up. Working with the elephant is not an easy thing. I remember this a day when we were with the elephants moving into the field, and then we encountered lions. 
and then now the lions who are already they wanted to attack us and then the elephant that we, we, we were with surrounded us and they gave us that protection. They charged, they broke the bush around until those lions ran off. And when they realized that their keepers were safe, then we turned with them slowly and we left the lions go the other opposite direction. So they protect us, we protect them. And all goes well like that. On the other side of Savo National Park lies a Thimba unit. It is the youngest unit set up in 2004 compared to Voi stockades that were built in 1950. This unit was set up by David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust with the aim of bringing back life to this region, which was taken away by rampant poaching throughout history. My name is Benjamin and I'm working with the David Shedbright Wildlife Trust. Uh, my home area is uh, Makueni and uh, here we are, we are at Ithumba. Ithumba we have an orphan project whereby we take care of orphans that are above two years, meaning that uh, we get them from Nairobi. Nairobi is the nursery. So in Nairobi, they decide which elephant to go to Voi and which elephant goes to Idumba. Uh, welcome, guys, to Idumba. Benjamin is in charge of this unit and part of his responsibility is to provide the orphans, the ex-orphans and wild elephants with water drawn from the borehole. This helps Benjamin and the team of elephant keepers to monitor the state of the elephants and know which elephants are missing and which ones have wounds caused by poisonous arrows. The orphaned elephants also act as ambassadors in bringing back wild elephants to this water trough. When I was young, my father used to work with the K Kenya Wildlife Service and he used to take us to the park to see these wild animals. Someone told me that uh, there are people who had elephants just uh, at uh, Nairobi National Park. So the next morning I went to the Shed Brigade quarters and uh, I found out there were other people who had come to try. The manager that time, she didn't know the criteria to use in selecting all these guys. I was just given a job by the, the, by the elephants that were there at that time. And I remember one of them was Yata and Molika, those who have babies, um, and I'm with them here right now. So I do feel happy for those elephants because they were among those who chose me at that time, back in 2000. Meet Mulika here, who is aged 13 years old. She has been out uh, for the last four years now. And uh, lucky now, she has got a award-born baby from Award Bull, showing how successful the project has been. So the baby Mwende is aged uh, eight months old. He's a happy baby. Mulika! Mulika! Mulika Mwende! Just wait for some few minutes, you'll be given your dairy cubes. Eh? Mulika!
Mulika is a fine example of a complete cycle of the reintegration program. Benjamin had been with this ex-orphan closely at the stockades for the last 10 years, and Mulika was back to the wild. Unfortunately, she was shot with a poisoned arrow in a bid to poach her tasks. But Mulika successfully escaped to seek help at the hands of the keepers. These are the dairy cubes, which are good for their health. So the reason why we put on these dairy cubes, we wanted uh, uh, the milk to increase for the better health of the baby. The problem started when uh, she was arrowed. She came with an arrow wound, and the arrow was poisoned. And you know when the poison enters into the bloodstream, it makes the blood to clot. So if the blood clots, then there will be no more production of the milk for the baby. So that's the reason why we decided to put on these treats so that at least the, the blood circulation can increase. And by so doing, the milk will also increase for the baby. With the orphans, you know they come all over Kenya from different parts. And when they come in one area, like when they are brought to Idumba, they just stay like elephants, like one family. And when they leave the human family and they join the world, the world elephants, they will not say, you have been living with people, so we will not accept you into our territory. So they are accepted, and they are taught what they need to learn concerning the world. One thing I've learned from elephants is that uh, they're always united. And uh, if an elephant uh, falls sick or is injured, you find that there are those elephants who stick to that elephant. He's never left alone. And when a left elephant gets stuck somewhere, I have seen several cases where these elephants, they come and try to help that elephant to come back to its feet. So it has been interesting to work with these elephants. So if humans can live like elephants, then you will never hear these wars <laughs> and enmities between people or nations. This world will be a very nice place to live in. <laughs>